see there's about 46 in now. Um, you know, I did not do a form this time around, so I'm not quite sure about the numbers of the student, but if it's based on previous numbers, perhaps we can expect anything from 100 to 300 students. Ms. Naidi, can you hear me? Yes, OK, thank you. Thanks so much. OK, thanks. Once the meeting is starting, it will. Your camera has been disabled. No, I have to have my camera. OK, uh, good morning, everyone. Just some housekeeping rules before we start with the presentation. Unati, I'm not sure if you want to, uh, if you have any housekeeping rules for them. I'm just wondering because it's 10.03 and we're going to begin at 10.05. So whilst uh, the others are here, maybe we can just make an announcement or two. OK, no problem. Um, thank you so much, Ms. Naidu. Um, welcome, um, LME students, to this library training. I just want to say, um, if possible, can you please keep your questions strictly for Ms. Naidu about the library training or library research? Um, any questions pertaining to the module, um, those will be dealt with by myself and Professor Pinar in a discussion class that we will, we will have. Uh, we will post up the details later on. So just for the sake of productivity for this particular session, um, just ask your questions about the um, library training because we only have an hour and 30 minutes with Ms. Naidu. So it's just easier if the questions are strictly about library training. Uh, you are also welcome to post up questions in the chat. I will uh, man the chat for anyone who maybe is uncomfortable to raise their hands. Um, or is too shy to ask a question, please do so in the chat. And also please raise up your hand before you ask a question so that we don't have everyone asking at the same time. And then um, we can indicate whose uh, hands is raised and they can go and ask their question. Kindly keep your mics off uh, while Ms. Naidu is presenting. Um, if you have a question, raise it. If you want to ask in the chat, please do so. That is it, Ms. Naidu, you can continue. Thanks so much, Unati. So you all should uh, keep your mics uh, muted until question time, otherwise it creates an echo. So uh, thank you so much, everyone. And I'm now going to start. Um, oh, somebody has already started the recording, I see. OK. It's me. Right. It's me. OK, I'm recording the OK, session. thanks, Unati. Thank you so much. So good morning, everyone. A very, very, very warm welcome. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, the lecturers for uh, calling me um, and arranging this session. Uh, yeah, and I'm hoping that it's going to be as beneficial as possible. Uh, some of you or many of you have already attended many of my previous sessions and you know that I've been hosting a, a series of training sessions in the last couple of years. So uh, I'm not new, but for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is uh, Yegis Naidu and I'm the personal librarian for the School of Law. And uh, I'm very passionate about offering uh, subject specific training and assisting the lecturers and their students where possible. Um, so the. Uh, how it's going to work is I will do a PowerPoint presentation. It's a very brief one. Uh, and then you can ask me questions based on the PowerPoint 
and then once I do the live demo on the library website showing you how to find different resources, um, you can ask me questions uh, as I'm going along. So I'm going to use uh, some of the keywords from the topic uh, that was given to me. OK, so let's begin. I'm now going to share my screen so that I could show you the PowerPoint. I won't be able to see the chat, but I know um, uh, Nati will be able to just shout out if there's anything that's urgent. So I'm basically going to do an introduction to the new library website, and I'm going to focus on the online library services and the online library tools that will be able to help you, uh, assist you with answering the questions in your topic. So today, our focus or our objectives for the training is I'm going to briefly explain the importance of analyzing your topic. And then we're going to do a brief navigation on the online library website, especially for those of you who may who may have missed my previous sessions uh, that are opened up to all students uh, a few weeks ago. We, then we're going to go on to online services and online tools. Uh, not so much on online services because I covered this in my previous sessions um, where I did a basic navigation and I touched on the services. So after this um, training session, if you need access to the previous training sessions, uh, it's all on my team. So after this uh, training session, I would also like to show you how to access the recordings that I did or the, the training sessions that I did in my previous sessions. So everyone, please make sure that you're muted. Uh, there's an echo in the background and it may affect the quality of our recording. Uh, thank you so much for your cooperation, everyone. I'm going to focus on finding books, case law, legislation and articles using uh, different uh, subscription databases and also focusing on how to do the settings on Google Scholar so that you will be able to retrieve full text journal articles. So when we addressing issues on topic analysis, it's important for you to take your topic and to highlight the keywords. So you should understand by now what is a keyword and those keywords will give precise meaning or add value to your topic. Uh, after you highlight your keywords, you should find synonyms for those keywords because there are certain instances when you're actually using those keywords, you may not find hits. So you will have to ascertain what other words can you use instead of the precise keywords from the topic? Then you should make use of online dictionaries and encyclopedias to understand key terms. So before you delve in and start finding case law and articles, you need to first ascertain, do I understand the meaning of these important keywords? in my topic. So take time to define the key terms. You, so you can use different tools. You can go to Google Scholar and you or you can go to Google and you can say define. A certain term or you could look at our online dictionaries and our online encyclopedias for law to understand key terms. Lastly, Ensure that you use a diverse range of resources. In other words, there has to be a balance. You can't only use articles or case law for your assignments or for your portfolios. You need to find books, articles, case law, and legislation by using the keywords that you've identified from your topic. So use one keyword at a time if it is a very comprehensive topic. If it is a simple topic, then you will just use the keyword and a specific country. 
So I will teach you the searching strategy as well when we do the live demonstration. This is what our library website looks like. It's got a new look for those of you who haven't attended my previous training sessions this year. You will notice that the library web page has got a new look. And to find the databases, you will go here to find e-resources. Or you can go to the LibGuides link and I will show you that when we do the live demonstration, but this is what the home page now looks like and the direct link is pasted on this slide. So we have search blocks, we have announcements, we have services for the different client groups, and we have library services and tools on the new page layout. So remember, I spoke to you about having a balance so you need to ensure that you know how to search for books. And all these are available via the UNISA library catalog and the find e-resources link on the library page. Finding peer reviewed scholarly articles. Now that's very, very important. We place heavy emphasis on this so that you would use our subscription databases and Google Scholar to ensure that you retrieve scholarly articles, articles written by reputable authors. Some of these authors are actually lecturers within UNISA and other institutions. Their articles are highly cited and they are published in quality journals. So these are the articles that you should use and not getting information from just any Google site. Or from. A magazine, so we encourage you to use. Quality journals when searching for articles. Then you will use a subscription databases for searching for case law. We will focus on um, LexisNexis essay law and Jutastat especially important for the South African law. Then I will show you how you find legislation. Using a database called net law, which is a subnet product. And it is a very useful website because it shows you the amendments. In a specific act and those amendments are highlighted. Then lastly, you may be required to use commission reports and the law commission reports can be found in the justice.gov website. Okay. I'm going to go on to the live demo shortly. In this PowerPoint, I will also insert the link to the recording, but remember the link to the recording will also be available on the chat. Lastly, when the training is over, I will ask you to please evaluate my training so that I could improve my training for future purposes. Thank you so much. That was a very brief PowerPoint because I decided that I would prefer to spend more time on the live demo. So uh, whilst we are here, um, sorry, I'll just uh, go back now to the uh, Teams platform uh, where I will um, be able to see the hands and then we can uh, take any questions that are emanating from the PowerPoint. And then I will move over to the live demonstration. Thank you. Are there any questions? OK, no questions. Everyone's now ready. I'm Snadu. Sorry, 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 sorry about that. I was no, just okay. trying to um, remember my question quickly. And I just wanted to um, inform students that the library also has a platform in which they can access all the prescribed textbook. Is that correct? All the um, for for any of the modules, they have um, access to the prescribed textbook on EBSCO hosts. Am I correct? 
we don't have we don't give access to all the textbooks. So X EBSCO host um, is um, is a provider, but not every prescribed textbook that's listed in the tutorial letters will be available on EBSCO host. Some of them may be available as an ebook, but there are also certain license restrictions that are placed on prescribed books. So we can have a look later on and we'll see what we come up with. But I will also show you okay. how to search. Thank for you e so much. Yeah, we will take precise examples. You will give me examples and we will do the searches for ebooks. Thank you, Unati, for that. OK, somebody's got a question here in the chat. The books we will find on the library resources. Is it just the names of the books that we have to outsource? Or is it full documents? You mean, oh yeah, PDF. Yes, we're going to be looking at this. I'm not, I can't say uh, whether the book, the entire book will be available or not. It depends from which service provider or which vendor. Different vendors have given us different permissions. And it depends on the title of the book. Thank you. It depends whether it's a prescribed book or not. So let's um, when I go into books, then we will do some examples. OK, thank you so much. I'm now going to move over to the library website. OK, so for those of you who are really new and you haven't used the library website before, I will encourage you to go to unisa.ac.za because the interface to the library here is slightly different compared to when you log into my UNISA. And then you will go to the library page. So I'm going to do a little bit of navigation first before I delve into searching. So colleagues, this is what the new site looks like. So you have all the search blocks there. And there's a block here for the electronic reserve. So we're not sure if there's any e-reserves placed for your module, but we'll have a look at that shortly. Then we can use the catalog search where we can find books. So you can either go to the down arrow here to find an e-book. OK, and you can go to the down arrow here to select the keyword. So you can do a keyword search, but uh, we'll go into that just now. Find e-resources is the A to Z listing of the different databases. So we're going to use LexisNexis. We click on the letter L and then we scroll down until we see LexisNexis South African law. So depending on what database you want, you will click on the respective letter here. If you want Hein Online is H. If you want Sabinet African Journals, it's S. If you want Juta, it's J. We will come back to this in a while. Let's go back to the library page so that we could navigate here. So the find e resources is the A to Z listing of all the databases. We're going to do a catalog search to search for ebooks. Then the find e reserves, you will put in your course code here to see if there's any recommended readings for you. So I see there's nothing here for LME 3701. OK, that's fine. Then you scroll down and you will see that we have different services, uh, services for the different client groups here. So we have services for new students, undergrads, postgrads. So if you go to undergrads, for example, you will see more information about literature search requests, borrowing and returning, IT support, library guides, training, branch opening hours, etc. OK, but our focus is not so much on the services today because I did cover this in my previous sessions. So that's just an outline. But what is important is the library guides because you can go into library guides and it's an alphabetical sequence. And if you scroll down until you see law libguide, there's our law libguide. The law libguide opens up with different tabs 
and you can search the databases from here. So if you go to the legal databases tab, under subject databases, you will find the various databases that we are going to use today. For example, LexisNexis South African Law and Net Law. So let's just do this again. We are back on the landing page. This is the library page. So when you are finding e-resources or finding databases, you can go either to the find e-resources link. Which will give you an A to Z listing of the various databases. Or you can go back to the library page and click on library guides. Scroll down. Until you see law. And then you click on the legal databases tab. And under subject databases, you will find. Most of our law specific and a few multidisciplinary databases. OK, so before we zoom in to find books, case law, journal articles, etc. Are there any questions? With what I've just demonstrated? So Unati, you will tell me if there's anything in the chat or if anyone has their hands up, if you can just coordinate that, then we will take questions. Otherwise, I will move over to finding ebooks. No questions? Then I'm going to proceed. Remember, you can also stop me in between if you want me to repeat or you want me to clarify anything. So we are going to take the keywords and I just want to be absolutely certain that I'm working on the correct topic. So uh, for today, Unati, are we going into, I don't know what page the topic, is it the one about child marriages? Yes, Ms. Naira, that's the one. Ukutsal. And child marriages, the comparative, the, the historical um, topic and the comparative okay. with so they can, Nigeria. OK, so they can either just do the one uh, just for South African or South Africa only, or they can do the comparative. If they choose the comparative, they must look at the laws of Nigeria. Nigeria. Otherwise, yeah. OK, cool. Otherwise, it's just uh, child marriages, uh, child marriages in South Africa. That is correct. Ukutwala, Ukutwala. Right. OK, yes. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I beg your you pardon are. if I didn't. <laughs> no, you OK, are. all right. Cool. Right. Remember, you can stop me in between and we can make it as interactive as possible because I want you to communicate with me. OK, but in most instances, I'll be repeating everything that I do this morning. So let's start off with the catalog search. So there's various ways to navigate to find electronic books or ebooks. So you can do a catalog search and in the drop down you can choose ebooks and in this drop down we're going to select keyword. So you can either put in child um, child marriage in open and closed inverted commas, right? And I'm going to explain this just now. Once I put it in this inverted commas, I'm searching this uh, catalog now for the phrase. So that it doesn't give me books on child or children and marriages separately. I want to find information or I want books that deal with the phrase child marriages. OK, so it's in inverted commas open and closed and then I selected the, on the drop down here ebooks. If I don't select ebooks, it will search the entire collection. So it will give me books from all the different libraries, including e reserves and items that are in the archives at, as well. But my focus today is on showing you how to find ebooks. Then you click on submit. So we can see that there's very few that came up. Anyway, let's see how you open up an ebook. Before we open it up, 
because we restricted it to ebook, the status for an ebook will always show online. OK, let's say we want to open this book. Let's say the second one, the second one looks like a more appropriate book. You click on the title. Where it says connect to, can you see my mouse? I'm hovering my mouse over view full text ebook at Cambridge. So Cambridge is the vendor providing us with this ebook. OK, later on I'll show you how we access the EBSCO ebooks. So let's click on the title there on view full text. Give it some time. And the ebook should open up in a similar format to a hard copy. Now, what's very interesting is within this ebook, okay, you will see a table of contents. Look, human rights of children in the EU. Okay, so you can go through the table of contents. And you can click on PDF. To open up that specific chapter. So I will encourage you to open up chapter by chapter. There's a little button here, which is the download button. So if you click there, it's going to go and save it in my downloads folder or you can download it to whichever folder you want. OK, so I'm just going to click on save and here we can see it has downloaded it. OK. Let's um, just go back. So remember we did a keyword search. I put in child marriages. As a phrase and in the drop down I selected ebooks. You can also play around with your um, keywords. So let's say I said child marriage. And see now what comes up. So you can see now that I took out the S. It's got it's given me more hits and the status says online. I can click on the title. Where it says connect to under that you click on view full text ebook at ProQuest. OK, as I said. Please ensure to look at the table of contents. And you can download the PDF. OK. And some of them have that little um, block where you can search further. So if you have a specific keyword, you can put it in there and then it'll bring up the chapter in which you can find that information. So that's one way in which you can find ebooks. If you have a precise title, you can also do a title search. So let's see. Did I spell it correctly? I think so. So I'm now not going to search in the entire collection. I want to see if the Pretoria main campus has got anything. Any books with this word in the title. So now I want to show you how a keyword search differs from a title search. You click on submit. So although that word is not in the title of the book, somewhere in this book. And it's actually a hard copy book called African Customary Law in South Africa. OK, it's also important to know whether you could use a 2014 edition. So your your lecturers actually need to clarify with you how far back do you need to go? Let's say you've just chosen the topic, the first one, not the comparative. Uh, can we go back? Uh, this is about nine years now, almost 10 years back. Is it OK for you to use this book? Yes or no, because it's um, not a very recent one. OK, now we can see 
that there's many books, but there's one in the postal collection that's available and there's so many that are out. If you want a book that's in the postal collection, you have to request it. And we're not sure how long it's going to take before it comes to you. OK, so that's um, there was only one with that specific title, but now I want to show you if we don't. Let's say we apologies, Ms. Snyder. Yes. Um, just in general, uh, how long does um, the postal collection take to get the book? It just depends. in general. Well, the postal collection book is here. It's it's with us on level three. But it's a closed access collection, so we the shelvers will go once they receive the request. They will go there. They will take the book out of the shelf and then depending on because when you click on request, the book will go to your post office. But if in the special instruction bo box you say will fetch from the Makonyak library, then it will be quite quick. But that's a different section altogether. And I can't say how many books they are already uh, planning to remove or, you know, to to how many requests they have. So I really don't know what's the turnaround time. But in certain instances, if you are local, you might as well say that you will fetch it from the Makonyak library. But um, I'm encouraging you to try and use to access ebooks because that that service is quite slow. Because of the huge number of requests that they receive. OK, any other questions on that? So I'm going back because finding books is really, really important. And I also want to show you how oh goodness. I don't know why it's so slow. OK, let's do it again. Just trying to close some of my. Okay, I think there's a problem with the library website at the moment. I mean, the library catalog. Let's see if we go to. Um, there's other ways of um, finding ebooks. So let's say uh, you want to look for the ebooks only from EBSCO host. You can actually do a search by going to the. Um, vendor page so we can go and look for EBSCO host and then we can put in a particular title there. OK, so how do you do that, right? So can you all see I've now opened up the e-resources page? OK, yes, we can see it. Thank you. And then here where it says all vendors or providers, you click on the down arrow. And you scroll. Until you see EBSCO host. So there are various. Um, databases within EBSCO host. It's really, really huge, but let's say you looking only at the ebook so you can click on ebooks on EBSCO host. You will need to put in your my UNISA credentials. To authenticate. So remember, you won't get automatic access to the ebooks. You have to be a registered student. OK. Now it has taken us to the ebook platform for EBSCO host. Now I would like a title, Unati, if you have a title, and let's see whether that prescribed book will be accessible to us. Do you have a, a, a precise title or must I just do a keyword search? No, you can do a keyword search. Um, I was I was thinking maybe we can. Yes, Ugutwala. OK, so you put in your keyword and on the right, you can see there's different fields, but what I'm going to do to simplify it, I'm just going to leave it like that and I'm going to click on 
search. If you want, you can put in South Africa, but let's just leave it like that for now and click on search. So keep your search strategy simple in the beginning. So there's no results found. It can't find anything. So now let's put in. Remember. If you don't get hits, you must try to broaden your search. Sometimes it's we use very specific words or phrases and the database is unable to pick it up. So now I'm going to complicate it. And I'm saying child marriages and South Africa, so I can put it in there or I can put South Africa in here. Now let's click on search. OK, it's actually reminding me that my initial search did not yield any results. OK, so I've changed my search strategy now. Are you I'm using a different keyword, but remember you can also search. Um, remember when I did the PowerPoint, I spoke about synonyms, so you can also put in forced marriages and you can think about your topic very carefully. Um, does this fall under constitutional rights, human rights, children's rights, family law? Think about it in the very broad perspective as well. So that's very, very important for you to sit down and make a uh, do a map for yourself. Start to understand your topic. Throw in keywords, throw in synonyms, throw in broader terms. OK, that is what's going to help you to find the material that you require. OK, so there are various books that um, come up, so you will need to click on the title. You will choose the book that you actually want to peruse through. So you will see on the left, there's a PDF full text download. I'm not going to do the download now for the sake of time. OK. What you can do is you can go through the table of contents and you can also look through the table of contents and you can download chapter by chapter. OK, so unfortunately I won't be downloading anything for the sake of time. I'm just showing you how you navigate the website to actually find the information. OK, so that's going into find e-resources and doing a search for a particular vendor, but there's a very simple way of also finding e-books. You can go to the e-journal finder. That's going to be changed to e-publication finder. Because although you can find journal articles and journal titles here, we're going to use this little tab on the top that says publications and we are going to search. For ebooks only, so I'm I'm persevering and I'm still putting a kutwala there and then I'm going to search and see. OK, no results, no results found here, so I'm going to put in. Um, child. Ms. Yes. Uh, I think a, a textbook that that the student might also find valuable is Heaton's Family Law because it also talks about marriages and 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 um, legalities of uh, marriages in South Africa. Okay, and I think so it's I'm going to prescribed for family law as well. I think it's okay, a prescribed so I'm textbook. going to so is it called the precise title is Heaton's Family Law? The precise title is South African Family Law by Heaton and Kruger. Jacqueline Heaton. OK, let's just search for South African family law. We yes. put in an exact title and let's see if it comes up. Voila. Okay. Now it's very important to search using this publications finder because some of the titles that appear here may not be available via the catalog search. That is why I'm spending a lot of time showing you how to find ebooks. There's the book. I'm assuming it's this one here. So you click on the link that says full text access and you can see it is a book by EBSCO. Now remember. I indicated 
that I won't be doing full downloads because it's going to take time. You will look for the PDF link or the full download. Or you can go. Into the table of contents and you can look at whichever chapter you want and you can download that chapter. So it may also found, it may also be found under customary marriages. But that is why I'm saying it's very important for you to go and read up on your topic first before you start searching. So besides just putting in child law, it, as I mentioned right at the beginning, or um, child rights or child marriages, it can fall under family law. So those are the broader terms that we're looking at. OK, so we actually found it. So. You can either look for it in catalog by doing a catalog search or on the publication finder. Now it's written e journal finder. So you go there to the e journal finder. It's actually a publication finder. And on the left corner, you click on the tab that says publications. And in there, you can put in your title or you can put in your keywords. Click on search and there's various other books that come up. Can you see that? So all of you don't have to only use that one prescribed book. You can go through the various books and see which one is appropriate for you. So let's say we click on this one. You can click on full text access and it's also a EBSCO 1 2010. Click there and then you can peruse through it, download it chapter by chapter. So you see on the left you will see full download in the middle panel. You will see the table of contents. So let's recap. I showed you a search here doing a catalog search, a keyword search and going to the drop down and just going to ebook. So you have filtered and you can put in your keyword and do a search. Or you can go to the library page go to the publication finder and go to the tab on the extreme left and you can do a title search, a subject search. You can do a title or a keyword search in here. There's one other way of searching for ebooks. You click on catalog search and in here. You can put in a keyword. With the end course search, this is a very broad search. So it will give me journal articles, books and various other. Information that comes in various formats. On the left, you will see under format. Now there's various filters here. You can use you must use the date range, etc. But now I want to restrict it because I'm only focusing on books. So here you can see there are 65 ebooks. And you click on apply. And now you will see the various books that are coming up. You will click on the title of the book. OK, and then you will do your download. Colleagues, I've done and I've spent a lot of time on ebooks. I'm now moving. OK. I'm moving on. I'm not sure if there are any questions with ebooks, but I'd really like to move on for the sake of time. OK, I'm now going to go on to showing you uh, how to search on Google Scholar. So we are now moving on uh, to finding articles. So when you want to find articles using Google Scholar and you want full text journal articles, You go to the three lines on the extreme left and you come to settings. I beg your pardon. You go to library links and you make sure that all these boxes here are ticked. If it's not. You will type in University of South Africa. Colleagues and the reason why we're doing this is that we want to use this link resolver which helps us to link our subscription databases with Google Scholar so that you could uh, uh, retrieve the full text articles. So if you put in University of South Africa there and then you click on the submit button, you will 
get this and you must make sure that everything is ticked there and then you click on save so that when we do a search okay it, it uh, actually remembered because i did a search this morning okay so you put in your keywords and you click on the submit button so remember, you can also search under forced marriage. OK, there's various. Articles that are coming through. And I see quite a few of the articles are from the database called Hein Online. So besides searching in Google Scholar, I'm going to show you Hein Online and South Africa. Um, it used to be SAE publication, South African uh, public, uh, South African uh, published journals. I will show you that in a while. So if you click on a title, Sabinet African Journals brings up the journal. You click on PDF. At some stage, colleagues, you're going to be required to put in your student number and my UNISA password to access. So remember, you must put in your student number and your MyUNISA password. And if you put that in and you still can't access the article, please send a message to LibHelp with your student number and they will check. Maybe you are not in the library system for some reason. OK, so this is very important, colleagues. Let's go back. Google Scholar, three lines on the extreme left. Go to your settings. Then under search results, you go to library links. Put in University of South Africa. If the boxes are not ticked, then you click on save. Now we are ready to do our search and I'm going to do a search on these keywords here. And if I want I, on the extreme left, I have a filter. I can also use the date range. Maybe my lecture is there. 2015 is fine to go back. So I'm going to put in my date range and I'm going to click on search. I have various articles that have come up. But let's see if there's anyone that most probably want to challenge themselves and they want to do the comparative one. So let's say they want to do. Child marriage and Nigeria, so now I'm changing my search strategy and I'm using the and as a Boolean operator because I want Google Scholar to give me articles with the phrase child marriage, but pertaining to Nigeria only. Sometimes the database is quite clever, sometimes it's not, but let's have a look and see what it gives me. So if you want only South African published articles or Articles with child marriage in South Africa, you will put in South Africa instead of Nigeria. Click on the search button. Can you see now how much of information, how many articles we are getting? So you can click on the right here where it says Hein Online or PDF, and it will open up the PDF for you. Okay, I'm working on campus, so I'm already authenticated. OK, so remember if it asks you, you will have to put in your student number and your MyUNISA password. Then you just click here where it says download PDF. And you will download it. Yes, remember we are now going to scholar.google.com. This is not a prescribed database. Uh, it's not um, it's not a subscription database. You will just go to your web browser and you will put in scholar.google.com. You can bookmark it and then you will do your settings here. Then you will put in your keywords and you click on search and the various articles will come up. Any questions on Google Scholar? No questions. Anything in the chat? Onati, I believe you are assisting on the chat. 
Okay, so we did a um, free search. No, they just wanted to ask if you download Google Scholar. So I said, no, you don't need to download it. Um, yes. So far, that's the okay. only. Yes. Yeah, and somebody is asking a very important question. If you see that it was cited, like this one here, cited by 34. This is important because yes, it's a it's a highly cited. It's a, it's a good article. It's a common. It's an important one. Yes, it just depends. I can't say yes, it has more credibility because it's cited by 34 people. Um, yes, but that's a good question. You can look at the citations as well to see. This one was only cited by two. Most probably it's not something that people really want to read or people are not really researching. OK, but you can look at this one here, especially for you. Um, you're looking at the legal aspects. So remember, it's a very broad topic. So when you are searching, you should also look at the law implications. Look at the legal status or the legality, because in your assignment or in your portfolio, it must show that you're taking the legal slant. Because it's quite a broad topic. OK, so I'm just taking the two um, broad. Yes, Naidu. Hi. We have a question, a hand up from Ritab. Okay. Can we take a question, uh, a question um, from one of the students that have their hand up? Yes, yes, certainly. Go ahead, please. Okay. I would like to know if it's possible to use the Google Scholar with uh, uh, with the, 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 the device. No, mm, I mean, the, our mobile devices. Uh, I haven't tried it. Uh, you can try it now and let us know. You can go to scholar.google.com and then you can see. Uh, but yeah, I haven't experimented with that yet because I'm not going to, uh, I'm not sure whether it will be able to do your settings for you. Because remember the settings to, um, yeah, I'm also opening it up on my mobile device. Um, because you have to do the settings. Yes, it does allow you. Yes. You can. You can do your settings and you'll be able to search on your mobile device. I've just tried it now. Thank you for that question. OK, so that's searching for articles using Google Scholar and I'm now going to run um, to using another database and I'm going to do it via the law libguide. So I'm now I've bookmarked my libguide and I showed you initially how to do this. For the sake of time, I don't think I'm going to repeat this. You can watch the recording. So just pay very close attention to how I'm going to access Sabinet African Journals. So you go to the Legal Databases tab and under Subject Databases, you will look for Sabinet African Journals formerly SAE publications. You will be asked to authenticate. To log in. Oops. OK, there's a server error. Let's see if we can get in. I'm going to do an advanced search. This cookie pop up is an ICT issue. They haven't resolved it yet. So when you do the advanced search, you will be faced with a template like this and there's a search block. So. I beg your pardon for the caps. OK, so I'm just putting in one keyword there, everyone. Scroll down where you see filter by collections and click on law. Sabinet African Journals is a multidisciplinary database, but I would like my articles to come from the law collection journals only because this is a very broad topic. So whenever I'm searching for law articles, I make sure that I go to the filter by collections and I click on law and then I come down and I click on the search button. Now it has given me. Quite a few hits. To open it, you can click on the title or on the right corner. You will see a little button there that says PDF. Click on it. It will load. Wait a few minutes. Until it appears here. Click on the download button and then you can save it in whichever folder you want. 
OK, so very, very quickly, I've bookmarked my law lib guide. It's opened up. I go to the legal databases tab under subject databases. I go to the Sabinet African Journals website or database. I beg your pardon. Sabinet African Journals will open up and on the right you will see a button that says advanced search. This is the most annoying thing with this cookie pop up. Then in the search box, you're going to put in your keyword. It's just hanging for some reason. OK, so you will put in your keyword. Let's move. Filter by collection, you will click on law. Then you click on search. Then you will get a hit list. And then you will click either on the title of the article or you can click on the PDF link to open the article. I'm now moving away from Sabinet African Journals. You all watched how I retrieved it. I retrieved that database from the Law Lib Guide. You can also go to the Find e resources link here to the A to Z list and you can retrieve the database but I'm going to my law lib guide. Um, the next one I would like to show you is Hein Online. Hein Online is a law specific database. Hence, I'm showing it to you. So remember, you can use Google Scholar, Sabinet African Journals, or you can use Hein Online. Now with Hein Online, you can do a broad search in that block. Then you get a second block. By browse database by category. Or you can go to the third block that says browse database by name. And we're going to go to the journal collection. So it's the very first link. We click on law journal library. Just wait for it to open up. It's a bit slow. Now, irrespective of which database you're searching in, the principle of searching remains consistent throughout. So as long as you know your keywords, and how to search, you'll be fine. So in the middle of the page, you see browse by. There's some blocks here. You click on country. Because I want to either look at the South African published journals. So you click on country. I'm now clicking on N for Nigeria. It's very, very slow. I don't know if anyone is busy searching as I am doing it here. And if you already in, most probably it's um, when you go to country, it enlists all the countries. So if you want to search, um, in the South African published journals, there's 29. So you can do a search there. For journal articles, or we can go to the Nigerian published one. So let's go to Nigeria. These are all the journals that it's going to search in. So let's uh, look at child marriage. OK, it said 10 journals, so you can search in there. It's going to search in these journals only. So remember, we went to Hein Online. And with Hein Online, there's filters on the left. So if you want only 2015 to 2023, you can put that in. Uh, under section type, 
you can say articles only. So let's just use those two filters for now, and then it will give you a hit list. It will give you the title. So the left panel is all your filters. The middle panel will give you the details of the article and the right panel will be the different options for downloading, emailing and printing or bookmarking. So let's say we're interested in this article. You go to download PDF. And your PDF will be downloaded. OK, I'm not repeating it, colleagues. Uh, we've searched on Hein Online, uh, Sabinet African Journals and Google Scholar. Kindly go through the recording. If it wasn't clear to you. Now I want to hop on to the. Um, going back to the legal databases. We are now going to go to the database called. LexisNexis. South African law. And I'm hoping that most of you who are sitting here are familiar with this. So you will have a table of contents on the left. Where you can see different commentaries. OK, so you can go. There's different uh, electronic resources here, so you can see family law and persons. There's actually a very good book here called. Um, Handbook of the South African Law Family Law Service, so you can go and have a look. Here and see if there's anything. That may be relevant for your specific assignment title. OK, so I'm just making you aware that in this table of contents, there's also resources here. You can also search for the case law here, but I would like to show you a quick and easy way of searching for cases. So running across the page in the middle of the page, you see a cases tab. So if you have only a keyword, you can put in your keyword there. It's going to search across various law reports, including the unreported judgments. And you click on the search button. Various case law will come up. You can click on the title. Of the case. Then below the home button, you will see various options either to download it or to email it. I usually use the email and it goes straight to my email address. What's very useful with um, LexisNexis or the Lexis library is a legal citator. So you can actually look at sometimes they actually give you the the acts that are related to this specific case. I see this one is still busy. So let's quickly go to the LexisNexis library again quickly. Lexis legal databases. Scroll down until you find LexisNexis. South African law. Now, for those of you who are doing the comparative research, please take note that LexisNexis also lists the following countries. So we also have cases and national legislation and commentary for Nigeria. I don't know. There could be just very few of you because in many instances, there's just a handful that do the comparative research because it's a little bit more challenging than just doing the normal one for South Africa. OK, so there is plenty of information for Nigeria as well. So let's go ahead and do a case. Um, we do a search again and let's say I put in my keyword and I clicked on search and I can either click on the title and then the full case will open up and then I can use the buttons here to download email or bookmark or I can send myself a link. So that is the, the link to access the full case. Back 
to the Legal Databases tab now, and I want to show you Jutastat ePublications. Excuse me. So this is a database which will show me case law for the South African cases. So a very similar format, everyone. On the left, you will see a table of contents. Go through it to see if there's anything um, for uh, family law, child law, etc. OK, otherwise you go to the drop down where it says choose advanced search form. Come down to law report search. Put in your credentials. Oops. OK, there's a problem. Um, let me just see. OK, so we are on uh, Juta right now. So with Juta, there's no field that says keywords as in the LexisNexis. Can you see that? It's just got a case name. It's got the citation um, field, so you can put in the year, the volume number, or the page of the citation for the case if you have it. Otherwise, we will just use the fly note or the head note field. Put in your keyword, then click on the search button. There are two cases that come up. Click on the title of the case. Here we go. And then all you'd need to do is you need to just go to the download button to download the PDF. OK, I'm not going to wait for the sake of time. There we go. You all should know how to do that. And please watch out for the further training sessions that I'll be having on finding case law. I'm having specific training on finding uh, South African case law. So please watch out for my training invitations. It's all posted on my team. OK, and you do have access to my team uh, link. If not, I will put it onto my PowerPoint. So I hope that this was clear. So basically you open Juta stat from your law libguide, choose advanced search form, Go to law report search and then in the head note or fly note field, you will put in your keyword. It actually saves it. Click on the search button. Your cases will come up. Click on the title of the case and then click on the download PDF button to download the case. OK, colleagues. Let's go back to our law libguide. Now I'm going to take you through to net law. So we have done books. We are done with articles. We are done with case law. We are now looking at. Legislation. So you scroll down until you find a database called. National legislation. Net law. Click on that. Or you can simply go to the A to Z list and look for N for national legislation. So here it also gives you the list of acts if you know the name of the act. But in our case, we don't know it. So my keywords are child marriage, and I want to see what acts pertain to child marriage. OK, it didn't um, yield anything. So maybe we're going to look at. Um, children's rights or child rights, so you need to play around. With the different search strategies, the different keywords to see. Which X may be relevant. So I can't say for now that that is a good one or this is a good one. You will have to look at the abstract. So let's say. We click on the title of Children's Act 38 of 2005. It gives you all the details about the act. 
So sometimes I must be honest, I go and I Google. Um, I will say. Legislation on child marriage and then it will give me a name of an act and that's how I search. OK, so it gives you the subjects here. Can you see? So you can you, you could have also searched under. Parents and children, human rights, juvenile justice, legislation, justice and constitution legislation. OK, so it gives you. Um, a breakdown of the regulations. And on the left. Where it says download files, you'll see. A PDF link to download that specific act. OK. We just move this up everyone. And there's our act there. So we are done with um, the X quickly on the um, lip guide, the law lip guide. I went to the legal databases tab and under subject databases. I scroll down until I see national legislation net law. If you know the name of the act, you can also go to alphabetical and you can do a search or you can put in a keyword of your choice. So let's say I went to alphabetical because I'm looking for the Children's Act. Click on the letter C, that's obvious. And you can see there's Child Justice Act and there's Children's Act. Click on it. On the left, you will see a link to download the file. Just click on that and it will download the act for you. When you open up the act, there may be amendments highlighted in yellow. So that is why I prefer to use net law because it gives us the highlights of the amendments. OK, let's go back. So uh, basically we covered the library website just navigating. I've spent a lot of time on showing you the various ways in which we could find ebooks. I also spent some time on showing you how to set up Google Scholar and find um, scholarly peer reviewed articles on uh, Google Scholar. I showed you a database called Sabinet African Journals and Hein Online. I've also showed you how to find case law using uh, Jutastat and using LexisNexis South African law. And I've also showed you the database called uh, NetLaw where you could find your acts. And lastly, if you are required to, let's go back here to see that my link works. Um, I also, you may be asked to insert some commission reports. So let's see if this link works. So the commission reports are actually here in this website. So you can just uh, put that URL in your browser and then you will click on the search button. OK, so I'm just putting in a keyword and I'm not sure whether there are any reports on this keyword, but basically you will go to that uh, URL. You can click on the link. You can just go to your browser and copy and paste it from the PowerPoint and then you will see various buttons here right on the top. You go to the search button and then in the search field, you will put in your keywords and you will be able to see various uh, reports and you can click on the report of your choice to download it. OK, we have 15 minutes more before I end of the session, and I would like to revert back uh, to the. Teams platform where I will be able to see um, the questions, the comments and. Um, any anything else that you may have that's concerning you. Otherwise, thank you so much everyone for listening. The floor is now open for your questions. The recording is going to be in the chat, so when we are done and once we we stop recording, give it a few minutes, then all you do is you will go to the chat button here on the top um, where all the buttons are on MS Teams 
you open the chat and you'll be able to see a link to the recording. So um, not sure. Someone, yeah, most of them are asking for the recording. I will also give the link to the recording to your lecturer and she will um, put it on or insert it onto the module site. But before I end the session, I want to also quickly show you um, how you will access my team. So for those of you who are not part of my team yet, um, I'm going to put the link in the chat so you can join the team and on the team um, you will be once I accept you, then you will be able to find all my PowerPoints of my previous training that I did this year and the previous recordings on the, uh, the website and finding articles and ebooks. So it will actually enhance what you have learned today. So I would like to take uh, any questions before I demonstrate how you find the PowerPoints and the recordings on my team. Otherwise, thank you so much for your attention and um, let's have some interaction with you. Thank you. Demba, you can ask your question. OK, if there are no, no questions, I think uh, what may interest you is if I can uh, just demonstrate to you because um, there are quite a few students who are emailing me and they are actually encountering a lot of issues or problems. It's just because they don't understand how Teams work and how they should navigate it. So if you have the Teams app, OK, so I have it on my desktop here. And I'm not sure if you have it on your mobile device. Uh, you will see links here on the left. So I usually go to Teams. And then you can go to all teams. So these are all the teams that I'm in. Or I've got access to. So I've created a team for uh, the law students that I offer training to. That's my team. So on the left, what's going to be really important for you is under channels. You will see general. If you click on general, then in the middle, in the middle of the page, or the middle panel rather, you see posts and files. You will click on files. Then all you do is you go to 2023 library training and the invitation is kept there, but the PowerPoints are kept here. So these are the PowerPoints for the various sessions that we held this year. So we did something on our Scola and RefWorks. We did finding books and articles and we did an introduction. So those are the PowerPoints and the general posts that are there. Now, under general, you come down to 23 training videos. In the middle panel, you click on files. See all the links to the videos. So it's afternoon or evening, but those of you who are attending can just get the video from the chat. But I have another training se session this afternoon, so I will only place this a bit later. But this is the videos or the training or the recordings for all the previous sessions. Please remember that these videos. So uh, please bear with the quality of the video and it take, it's very time consuming to edit because the students need the videos like yesterday. So um, hence uh, you have to just uh, go through them. There may be some large breaks in the beginning or in the end, but I beg your pardon for that. So these are unedited videos. OK, so just to repeat, you go into your team. If you go to general, you will click on the files tab. You go to 2023 library training. You will see the invitations and the PowerPoints. If you go down to 2023 training videos, you click on the files tab and you will get access to all. 
I'm just going to check very quickly with your permission to see if anyone has already. Yes, so people have already asked to be part of my team. I've now accepted you and you can now go ahead. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time, for your attention and for communicating with me. I hope that you found it useful and I would like to just um, put the link uh, so that you could evaluate my training. I will put it. Um, I will. Um, I just want to put it in the chat. Uh, so that you could take a few minutes uh, to just uh, go through this and. Um, answer the evaluation. As Ms. honestly Ida? as possible. Ms. Ida? Yes, we have um, three questions. Um, three hands were raised up. It's Temba, Ash and Sabin Kosi. Is Temba still here? He, he'd like to ask a question. I, he lowered his hand. I'm not sure why. Temba? Yes, I'm still here. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll be very brief. Thank you so much for the presentation. It has been extremely helpful. What I wanted to quickly check with you is that all those other uh, websites you shared with us, especially the Tutor State, the Lexus, are those accessed via UNISA as, since you are students there? Because they normally require subscription. Thank you. If you access it via the UNISA website, as I indicated, or via my UNISA. Um, OK, let's go uh, into the library site. OK, and if you go to find e-resources, if you go this route, Right, and you click on Hein Online or Sabinet or Juta. Um, in some instances, it's only when you require a full text or just before you access it, it will ask you. I'm not sure at what stage because I'm already authenticated. But you should never be asked to purchase anything from our subscription databases. It means that you haven't authenticated officially. So when you're experiencing that kind of a problem, please send an email if you've gone this route and you put in your credentials and you can't access it, it's asking you to purchase, then you must send an email to lib-help at unisa.ac.za and they will check whether you are on the library system because there are many students who are not on the library system. So when you try to access uh, let me st OK, I'm sharing again, so I'm not sure if you saw the email address in the chat. So if you're not on the library system, it won't authenticate you and then it will ask you to purchase. But go via. That I showed you via the UNISA library and then go to find e resources or to the LibGuide to access the databases. Next question. Ash, I think Ash had a similar question because he's struggling to log in again. Ash, you can continue. Hello? OK, Ash is not around. Uh, most probably it was in the chat. OK, somebody oh. asked how they join my team. I've given you the link to join my team, and I see many people have joined my team. OK, then Ash is saying she's struggling. He or she, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Each time you pick a database, it does not go to the page like it has during your live session. It asks for your login. Should I contact the admin department? No. Remember for the login details. Um, yeah, it depends how you are going in. Remember I said right at the outset, follow this route. So go to the unisa.ac.za, then click on library, then into find e-resources. Before you choose a database, or while you are searching a database, it may ask for your credentials. It's your student number and my UNISA password. If it kicks you out, then there is a problem with your credentials. Please send a screen capture with your student number to libhelp and CC me. OK, it could be a technical issue. It could be your credentials. So let's try various ways to troubleshoot it. 
OK, let's see if there's any other questions. Miss Naidu? Yes. I just wanted to verify um, something for myself and on behalf of the students. When yes. we were going through the e-books, right, and you were able to download um, one of the pages uh, from the e-books, I just wanted to verify so the students don't get confused. In terms of copyright, you cannot download the entire textbook. So um, it's always easier if you read a page to see whether or not you want to download it. And then I think the maximum you are allowed to download per day is two pages. Am I correct? At here too, that's a good question. Thanks, Unati. Here too, it depends on the vendor uh, restrictions. So for some ebooks, they give us, they allow you to download the entire book because that's the license agreement. That is what we're actually paying for. Okay. For certain books, you can only do two pages at a time or it may allow only five simultaneous users. For some books, it may allow you only two days. So there is no fixed agreement with a specific vendor or a specific ebook. It just depends on that specific title or what the vendor agreement is. Awesome. Thank okay. you. OK, thank you. Thanks, Unati. Any other questions or anything on the chat that we didn't attend? OK, Ash, this one here is definitely your credential problem. I saw your screenshot. Please send it to LibHelp. Um, yes, I know at the end we had to rush through colleagues, but um, yeah, I'm now going to officially say thank you very much for listening, for all your questions and your concerns, and thank you so much to the lecturers for organizing this session. Uh, I'm hoping that it was beneficial, and um, you can join my team to access my other sessions. You're most welcome to look at the training invitation and attend the sessions to come in the future. Um, I will make and remember on the chat, the recording will be available. So, Unati, I'm going to stop if that's in order with you. Yes, that's fine, Ms. Nadu. I think if um,